Probiotics are finally finding their way into clinical practice in the mainstream. We've known about probiotics for the last 30 or 40 years and know they have profound effects at helping us to stay healthy. But it's only been probably the last five years, maybe six or seven years, that it's found their way into the mainstream or actually started to use it. And an interesting article came out uh, this last week that talks about how probiotics can protect the intestinal tract from radiation damage. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. But I want to be sure you understand what a probiotic is first. There are at least a thousand different kinds of species that are in the of, of microbes that live in the intestinal tract, mostly the colon, but also to some extent in the small intestine. And they create a very complex ecosystem that has a lot to do with our health. There are lots of benefits that they cause, and of course, if the wrong microbes are there, lots of problems can develop from it, some of them including infections. So it's important that we make sure that we don't disturb this complex ecosystem. And we do that frequently with some of the things that we do, like taking certain medications, uh, taking antibiotics, for example, is one that's really common, or sometimes just when we get sick. And when we wipe out that system, that ecosystem, with an antibiotic, for example, you can't just go back. It, it's much like a, like a forest fire. You can't just go back, throw a few seeds out, or plant a few se uh, seedlings, and think that you're going to make that forest have a complex ecosystem in a quick time again, because it's not going to happen. And it's, to some extent, the same way in the intestinal tract. So it's important that we maintain and protect that microflora, because it does a lot of things that we like, like metabolizing hormones and carcinogens and toxins. It synthesizes a lot of vitamins, like vitamin K and B5 and B6 and biotin. Uh, it synthesizes short-chain fatty acids like butyrate, which is a major metabolic fuel that the colon depends on to be able to do its function. It crowds out pathogens like C. difficile intercolitis or the, the MRSA infections or other kinds of things like salmonella that might, if there's overgrowth of those bacteria, cause you to be sick. And of course, it stimulates the immune system to be able to protect us more. So there's a lot of value in having the right microbes there and us being sure that we protect them so that uh, they can do their job. Now, probiotics before radiation, that's an interesting concept. It's not something I would have guessed would have done any good. But indeed, in studies on mice, what we're finding is that when you, you irradiate a mouse and you give it a probiotic first, and in particularly the lactobacillus, one of the lactobacillus varieties, or several of them, the, there is a lot less damage to the gut from the radiation. And it's interesting, and the theory is that probably it has something to do with COX-1 and COX-2, which are the enzymes, the cyclooxygenase enzymes that are involved with the use of NSAIDs like Advil and Aleve and Motrin and Celebrex. Even though I don't recommend those drugs hardly in any situation, those are the mechanisms that are probably involved and it has to do with inflammation protecting against inflammation and probably in protecting against uh, angiogenesis which is rapid blood vessel growth that is often associated with cancer so what's to lose by using a probiotic in the setting where you have problems in the gut that are related to radiation so, for example, if somebody needs radiation because of a tumor, a cancer of some kind, why not give them the probiotic first? It may do a lot to protect against the radiation damage, according to the studies that have been shown here. Another way that you can protect is by giving large doses of vitamin C. I'll give you an example. In, in a rat model, if you give two or three grams of vitamin C to the rat before you give it a lethal dose or an ordinarily lethal dose of x-ray, the rats won't die anymore. So a lot of it has to do with the free radical production that occurs when we give radiation, and the vitamin C does a lot against that. So we could also give additional support to the gut. We don't have to stop just with a probiotic. How about we add the major metabolic fuel of the small intestine, L-glutamine, and give things like essential fatty acids so that it can repair itself, and small peptides that come from fish that can help prevent the so-called leaky gut uh, syndrome and some Saccharomyces boulardii, which is a yeast that's a friendly yeast that can help prevent uh, candida from occurring. Or any other kinds of supplement that support normal growth and, and repair of the gut. So I think there's a whole lot that we can do in the area of probiotics that will help people stay healthier. 
We should keep from destroying them. We should make every effort to avoid taking any drugs or getting in situations where we can uh, cause the microflora to be disturbed. And now that we're doing more research and we're finding that probiotics even protect against radiation damage, it could be that finally probiotics are going to find their place in mainstream medicine.